told us Joe was trying to get her hands from her back to her front when she was hiding in the bush. He's testing it out. <laughs> I don't think she's lying. When I met her, she seemed genuinely traumatised. Hey. You're Mark Wilton, aren't you? Yeah. I'm Frank Thorne. My shout! Your friend Mark's writing for the Sunday Times now. Did you know that? Lee's had to face a new test of endurance from Northern Territory Police. I asked Mark not to write about the police. He wrote it with another journalist. They're all saying it. All the papers. And listen to this. It was 3 a.m. and Joanne Lees had woken with a start. Her aching body racked with sobs. How would he know? It's not like he's in bed with me, is it? Identifying the man? We do not as yet have any leads on the man. Mark Wilkinson, train and advocate. How far are you from a positive ID from the truck stop photo? No comment. Does Joanne Lees have a history of mental health problems? I find that question offensive. Next. I think we should turn this off. Is she a suspect in this case? She is not a suspect at this stage. That's ridiculous. What do you mean a suspect? No comment. If you need a good lawyer, Mark will find you someone. Mark is one of the reasons they don't trust me. Look, um, I don't think it's a good idea for me to stay here anymore. I'm going to pack my stuff. Oh. Ryan, good to see you. Any news on the gun there, Commissioner Bates? Is it sure you found a body south of Alice Springs? No, there's no truth to that. You're lying! Now, I've flown here today because I'm concerned that this case isn't going as well as it should be. You mean because you haven't found the man? We need to work together on this. In the short term, that means dealing with the media. I'm not talking to them. I've done one interview already. Our phones aren't ringing. Not enough people are calling in with information. It's on the front page of every newspaper anyway. People need to hear it from you. Why? Because they think I'm lying? Prove them wrong. Tell them, tell them there's a gunman out there who needs to be caught. Do the police think that I am a suspect in this case? Absolutely not. But you need to deal with the media. And you really think that'll help find me? Yes. Well, then I'll do it. Miss Lees has your list of questions, and she'll be with you shortly. Why weren't there any footprints? Well, I don't know. What's happened to Pete? If I knew that, we wouldn't be here. Well, it's just a list of questions from the press to get the ball rolling. I'll only answer these three. Oh, please, be reasonable. I won't do it otherwise. I won't. Miss Lees will only have one reporter and one cameraman in the room. Settle down. Settle down! We will set up a video link in another room down the corridor. Miss Lees has said she will answer these three questions. The questions she's prepared to answer, they're all to do with the media, how we pissed her off. What's her problem? My lot says she won't talk. Go for her. Our purpose at this stage was to get the message out across Australia in the hope that we could find the person who we believe has killed Peter Falconio. We 
certainly encourage her to speak to the media. The World's Press have come here to help publicise the case and hope that they find this man. She then refuses to cooperate. She refuses to talk to us. I guess it depends on how you see reporters. Do they report the facts or not? Do they twist your words? stood in this, I would um, ask him to let the police know where Pete is. <clears throat> um, I have a problem with all press who distort the truth and doubt my story. Anyone that's met me, they believe me. They're uh, ready for you. Come through. What do you want? We need to go over aspects of your statement that we can't explain. And we'd like to talk to you about Pete. I've told you everything. Again and again. You haven't told us how you felt about him. How would you describe your relationship with him? I can't talk about Pete right now. Why not? What do you want from me? At this stage, we want closure for Pete's family. They need to take him home. Can you help us with that, Joanne? I've helped you all that I can. Are you sure? We understand you want to go back to the UK. I don't want to go back, but I'm no use here. Look, whatever it is that you might think, there is a man out there, and he will do this again unless you find him. Now, am I free to go? Yes. You want to keep the surveillance going, Anna? Everything, until she leaves. Phone calls, emails, the lot. They found no footprints of a gunman, and that was despite the police using expert Aboriginal trackers. Trackers who also told them that nobody had sat in the hiding place in the bush for anything like the five hours Joanne said she did. She said that he passed within two metres of her, so if you did, I've always wondered why someone would shoot someone, a perfect stranger in cold blood on the side of the road, and then let the only witness to the alleged murder get away. This is Martin Bashir from ITV's Tonight Show. I've told your producer I'm not interested. Please, don't hang up. I just want to meet with you and explain. I can help you get your story out there. Obviously, there'd be money involved. Look, I can't talk now, OK? Hey, Joanne, just a minute. Joanne Leeds has, uh, in fact, now left Australia. She has left Australia. She boarded a flight to Singapore about 3.30 p.m. our time. Thanks for updating us. My pleasure, Alan. Bring a radio. Have you heard anything <clears throat> from the Aussie police? They keep in touch. There aren't many leads by it, sound of things. What are you going to do now? 
We move back to Brighton. <clears throat> I feel closest to Pete there. Mum doesn't want any of Pete's stuff moves. Not till he comes back to get it. It'd have to be a miracle now. Wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. How are you feeling? Nervous. I hate talking about myself. Don't be stupid, you'll be great. Now, we're going to have to talk through how you feel about Pete. OK? Mm -hmm. In order for me to do what I'm going to do to the Australian police, which is basically going to be very humiliating for them, the viewers have got to understand that the reason for all of this is that Pete was a good man. Can you help me with that, Joanne? Yeah. OK, one's good. Two, move in tighter, please. That's good. OK, Martin, it's yours. People have accused you of being cold. How do you answer that? <clears throat> um, I do bottle up my feelings. It's true. In Alice Springs, after the attack, I did cry every single day, but just not in front of the cameras. OK, to one. I didn't want my mum to see it. And Pete? How do you feel about Pete? Where do you want me to start? Brighton. On his graduation day. There's a picture of the two of you together. Mm -hmm. In this special edition of The Tonight Programme, Joanne Lees tells the story of what happened to her the night she says her boyfriend was murdered. She says? There's no weapon, no gun, no body. And there's Peter's blood on the ground. Some people say the person who murdered Peter was Joanne. For the avoidance of, of any doubt, and because I know this is the question people would want me to ask you, mm -hmm. did you kill Peter Falconio? No. No, I didn't. Where's the stuff about the police? Peter Falconio remains shrouded in mystery. The police have no new leads. And unless there's a major breakthrough, then it seems unlikely that the Australian outback will ever give up the secret of what has become the Peter Shit. Falconio. something for you? No. Nah. <laughs> Don't even try it. Peter Falconio. That pom. Mate of mine reckon he done it. Why does he reckon he did it? Nah, he talked about burying a body in a spoon drain. Easy digging, he reckons. And where is this mate of yours? Nah, he's gone to ground. I reckon I could help you find him. Stop! Please, do you are! 
Hands on your knees! Down your knees! Hands on your head! Hands on your head! Hands on your head! Now! Hands on your head! Hands behind your back! Hands behind your head! Now! Stay still! You fitted me up, you bastard! Weapons clear! This a Weapons bloody fit-up! Weapons clear! You dog bastards! You fitted me up, you dog bastards! You dog bastards! Joe's family liaison officer. Detective Sergeant Kerr. Mitch Jones. Welcome to Sunny Brighton. This way. Right. Tape, Joanne Lees has selected photograph number 10, Bradley Murdoch. I'm right, aren't I? He's the man that's been arrested, yeah. So, um... So what happens now? The man accused of murdering British backpacker Peter Falconio arrived in Darwin today under heavy police escort. Northern Territory Chief Prosecutor Rex Wilde told officials there will be no communication with the media. Bradley Murdoch is on remand in Darwin prison. Evidence against him will be put in front of a magistrate or then decide whether there is enough evidence to try him for the murder of Peter Falconio and the attempted abduction of Joanne Lee. Oh, Good morning, good morning, good morning. Say hello Hi. to Anne. Hi. She's new to our legal team. What do you know about the Lindy Chamberlain case? Good morning. Good morning. Hello? Hello. As she said, her baby was killed by a dingo. No one believed her. She went to prison and was released on appeal. Come in, come in. From a Northern Territory point of view, the Chamberlain case was a disaster. The police came out of it looking like buffets. Sit down. OK. The legal system came out of it badly as well. She got a raw go, Lindy Chamberlain. And she did three years. And our job as public prosecutors for the Northern Territory is to make sure that nothing like that ever happens again. Victims and accused, they must be given a fair go. Here we go. Joanne, welcome to Darwin. Uh, I'm Tony Elliott. This is Anne Barnett. Hi. Hi. Thanks. Well, uh, Rex's plan of getting you here a week early seems to have worked. There's no press. I'm not doing any interviews. No photos. Nothing. Hi, Joe. I'm Rex. I prefer Joanne. Joanne, then. Let me show you around. How was your flight? <clears throat> Fine. As you know, you'll just be putting evidence in front of a magistrate. It's a formality. It's part of the Australian legal process. Well, I've been told the case can be thrown out of court at this stage. Theoretically, yes, but very unlikely. My office has been working flat out on this case. We've put in a new computer system, and they are even building a new courtroom. I want to talk to you, please. Alone? Follow me. I am not happy with the way this case has been handled. The police, right from the beginning, they have just been... <clears throat> well, well... Well, let's just say... They weren't very sympathetic. I see. Are you a police lawyer? I'm the director of public prosecutions. 
I prosecute for the community on cases brought by the police. So you are then? We're independent. Have you ever even worked outside the Northern Territory? I was a practicing barrister for 20 years in Melbourne before I came up here. And before you ask, this isn't my first murder trial. In fact, I'll probably be prosecuting other murder trials at the same time as this one. I hope you'll have time to focus on this one, then. She's quite something. I wonder what a jury's going to think of her. These emails, have you seen them? What? I think she's hiding something. I reckon it's another guy. Oh. Would you like a glass of water or a cup of coffee? I'd just like to get on with it. This is what's going to happen. You're going to stand up in front of a magistrate and I'm going to ask you questions. You'll try and build for him a picture of your life with Peter, your relationship. Then we'll move to your journey from Sydney to Alice Springs. And finally, we'll talk through the night of the attack. You OK with that? So you left Sydney, you travelled to Alice Springs in the combi. You enjoyed that? I could have done with some four-star hotel stops along the way, but yeah. You like the closeness, the sharing with Pete? Of course. Why wouldn't I? What do you want me to say? It's useful to illustrate that you were a loving couple. Before we go on with the rest of your story, Joanne, we need to address these. I need to ask you about this relationship. It wasn't a relationship. It was a friendship. I made it clear to the police. I never hid anything. Let's rewind a bit. How did the police find out about this? They're uh, ready for you. I was so focused on finding Pete that I didn't realise how it looked. So who's Steph? It's a name I, I use for him. For this lad called Nick Riley. Well, why do you use that name? He's um I didn't want Pete to know that I was emailing him. And you didn't want us to know either? I didn't think it was any of your business. This is a murder investigation, Joanne. Everything is our business. Now tell us about Nick Riley. He was friends with some friends of mine at work. Just a bit of fun. I never went to university. I never had that kind of social life. Pete did, I didn't. It was a friendship that overstepped the boundaries. Nothing more than that.
Nick had nothing to do with what happened. Hey, Vince. How you doing, love? Hello. <laughs> I hope I bump into you. I'm here to give evidence. <laughs> what do you reckon about me in a wheelchair, eh? A couple of pallets fell on me. <laughs> I've got to go. <clears throat> My car's waiting. You've got to lead it in front of a magistrate. Get straight in there and ask her, who's Nick Riley? It's not relevant to the case. Who cares? If the defence brings it up and we haven't, we'll look like total jerks. I need to gain her trust. She screwed around. That's her problem, not ours. If Algie's found this in police... I'm running this case, Tony. I'll do it my way. Ah. Ah, Frank. Congratulations. Editor of the Northern Territory News, eh? Yeah. Oh, here to see the great man himself. Yeah, so, uh, what's this Grant Algy like anyway? Ah, he gives great headlines. If there's one man who can get Murdoch off, it's Grant Algy. Thank you. I've called this conference because, unlike the Director of Public Prosecutions, Brad Murdoch does not have a media liaison officer. He doesn't have a website. <laughs> he has a presumption of innocence and an absolute right to a fair trial. Twig and I are here to make sure that he gets one. One of the biggest murder cases in recent times will begin in Darwin today. From the Magistrates Court to Darwin Supreme Court. One of the most sensational murder cases in time. Hearings expected to last six weeks. Police have flown into Darwin in the past few days. This is intended to the trial will appear. Police have taken over 600 witness statements to this point. We'll give evidence in the next few weeks. And every day, Bradley Murdoch will be driven in a police van for court. For real news. Joanne to be composed as she entered the court. We should be finished by the mid-morning break, then you're on. Feeling OK? Are you going to bring off Nick? No. Thanks. If the defence does, I'll just fend them off. Now, Joanne, you ID'd Bradley Murdoch on a photo board. He'll be standing in front of you today. Now, this is something I ask all my witnesses to do. It's nothing to do with you personally. It's just something I'd like you to do for me. What? I want you to take a good look at him. I want us to know we've got the right man. 